Hello. Hi. Hello. My name is Andrea. I'm part of the uh, curatorial team of collective practices at Akut in Berlin. And I'm speaking with uh, Vidisha or Fadasha based in Delhi. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Um, and we're um, planning some activities together in a collaboration between uh, the party office that we are going to learn a bit more about in this conversation and collective practices. And um, in order to um, give a bit of background information and some insights into your thinking and approaches, Vidisha, that you're having with the party office and that also inform our joint activities. Yeah, we just wanted to have this conversation to, to share and um, see how, where those activities come from and um, what, inform, what kind of thinking informs them. And yeah, I would say if we start by, do you just want to briefly introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, thank you so much for inviting me actually. And it's really great to be able to find time and with each other, like considering how normally institutional collaborations function and that we've been able to do that because of the kind of pandemic that we are in right now. Um, and, and yeah, and I think it's also really interesting that the pandemic also set, offers the kind of flexibility in terms of processes and stuff because really you can't predict what might happen and what, what might not happen and for me it's really interesting because that's actually how i work like i kind of always leave space for possibility but that within this kind of traditional institutional systems doesn't work because they're like we need to be organized and we need to be that but then the pop the kind of pandemic's not necessarily an excuse but it's the kind of condition that there is that uh, we don't know what's going to happen. And since we started this conversation in April, um, so much has happened uh, for me. Uh, and I want to talk about that a little bit because COVID has left me with, is, I mean, I think we'll, there'll be a collective PTSD about this as a generation. Um, uh, like I was stuck in Australia and then I had to take like a repatriation flight to India uh, came to India. India is a complete mess um, in terms of financially, in terms of uh, our government. I mean, also COVID has made visible so many f uh, fault lines uh, within our system. So I was in some kind of a hotel quarantine <laughs> situation. Uh, I was really lucky because most of my, I didn't have to pay for any of this, but there were families which were leaving in groups of five and it must have cost them $15,000 or something to actually do that. I mean, and then by, parallelly, we are all still thinking about what we are doing and that the social event is going to happen. And also thinking of, because party office is also like a kind of an art and a social space. So then the whole social really changed. And I obviously in like contemporary conversations, we think of space and social in so many different formats because we also include digital and this kind of uh, nomadic nature of people and work. Uh, so it's really interesting that these things are really allowed to be in a pandemic condition while rather institutions are always strict about how these things would work. Mm. So maybe we can start um, looking into your, the party office yeah, that you just mentioned. Um, as uh, I think that you have started as a space in Delhi um, at the beginning of the year or last year. Mm -hmm. and, um, but as the physical space has gone a bit into the background, uh, the physical space to gather people has come a bit into the background in the current moment. So, so let's maybe think about the concepts behind the space that I think also go a bit beyond the physical space itself, the way I understand what, it, what you have also written a bit about, like you, you can also find things on the internet about the party office, there is some text, but for people who have not read, uh, read this, if you could um, give a bit of background how you came up with the name for example and and what what you want to explore with it yeah so i think i can also just uh, maybe look back at what i've written a little bit which is that 
party office is actually a term which is used for uh, offices for political parties and that's a very common term in south asia and for me um, art and politics are all related for me art is really a language to do politics because the way politics has been happening at least like in the current climate uh, these are all really patriarchal for me like in terms of even the kind of left politics that we have here even communist politics that forms of organizing they're all very alienating to queer bodies trans bodies and even women so uh, yeah so for me art is a form of aesthetic of doing politics um, and uh, it's really interesting because in the last two years so i've been doing uh, i've been working in the arts for more than 13 years and i primarily worked in alternative spaces i've also organized a lot with kind of feminist queer movements and different collectives over time actually and i have run like different queer groups i've organized different queer groups for like 10 years now um in different parts uh, i've also lived in different parts of the world a little bit um so I'm, sort of exposed to how politics really change. And that's why I'm also interested to think of um, uh, that how hegemony is really uh, also that the hegemony at a micro level is different from a hegemony at a macro level. And both of those things influence local politics and community. Anyway, so for me, I'm really interested to kind of challenge those forms of hegemony because they are the ones who kind of empower people systemically to produce violence to those who are minorities. Uh, and those that shifts, you know, like uh, a certain religion might be a minority somewhere while it might be a majority somewhere else. And a lot of times the whole dialogue about the majority kind of doing violence to the minority is that that uh, uh, when we're in this other country where we are a minority, there is violence done upon us by this particular this particular majority in religion. So we will do violence here. So majority always kind of feels find space and uh, find safe safety to be able to do that kind of violence. And the violence, if you look at uh, and dem in certain democracies like U.S. and India, which are some of the largest democracies. Uh, the political uh, people who are in political power play a huge role even in terms of culture and uh, even in terms of how what is what is um, um, okay to do within culture so like we have a right now a hindu nationalist party india has always been a hindu state uh, uh, but it's a lot of liberals who just say that as if it's only this party which is a hindu party which is not true I mean, India is a colonial project. It was always a colonial project, and it's just never articulated as much as that. I mean, I think any kind of borders are that because a lot of these borders, especially in the regions of South Asia, they are built by like small, small little princely states uh, through like a carrot stick thing, where either you like, oh, you will get all of these, you know, things that the. This is just a conversation around how India gets formed, actually. But yeah, that's still a very micro level. So I'm interested in that kind of politics at that micro level also of thinking uh, South Asia, the large society is largely um, kind of segregate. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, seg the patriarchy is primarily that of Brahminic patriarchy, which is basically organized based on caste. And the caste system is beyond uh, Hinduism. It's not, it is taking from a Hindu text, but it is not about Hinduism any Catholic in South Asia, a Muslim in South Asia, all of these are, are, are a part of the systemic caste system, which is a geographical system. So uh, that becomes obviously a micro level. But what happens is that this kind of a micro politics, when it's so large and so much so practiced and uh, ingrained within culture, it is carried forward by the diasporas, by migration and they so it continues to keep happening it's like racism i mean racism also is that that you know okay if you are not in a place where there is um so there's like uh yeah so i mean these are all just different kind of macro micro politics that i'm interested in i have been very interested in politics around race as well and in why i was speaking about covid was because 
I have a huge critique, like I have a whole critique about race and COVID actually, uh, which you can see in some other interview probably, but here I'm gonna let it pass. Yeah, and then also in India, there is no, and, and democracy is really important for us. Like, you know, in India, there is no good opposition party. Like, you know, they had, they had the current party has complete power. Like it has majority in government and stuff. So I think it's also about thinking that as a generation, we are not able to relate to a political party. So then how can we create a community which has shared values? So therefore party office becomes a site for that kind of a conversation and uh, coming together for that sort of a future public, you know, so that is party office. So, yeah, so that's where it takes from in terms of culturally, but also what it does is that because aesthetics is important for me and something that I have, I also work across disciplines, like I've worked in academic space, I've worked in art and whatever, art organizational spaces, but I've also worked in kind of music and nightlife space. And I think, and that's um, so two years ago or something, I became a DJ and then uh, just kind of, and, and it was really interesting for me. And why I did that was because for me, entering a nightclub is also about kind of taking up space because cast and the space that I come from, we, that's not something where we are usually invited into or allowed into. And because of having a certain kind of aesthetics in terms of how you dress or how you are and how you speak, I'm allowed to be in the space of the club. Uh, so for me, it's also about taking space in that club as like my body being present in that club and also being vocal about how now this body has come into your space. And, uh, but also uh, nightclub, what happens here in the art organizations is that, you know, in the gallery or even like talks or something like that, there's only a certain kind of audience which is coming, which primarily also thinks that we are already converted in terms of our politics, that we are already radical, we are already progressive. So there is no really, I don't find any meaning necessarily in talking to people like that, like who feel, who are either already actually converted or think that that we already know. And uh, for me, my target audience, even in terms of a party office uh, kind of audience that one is looking at engaging with is a younger group of people, you know, because here our education system is really bad. There is no diversity plurality within the education system. So party office and art engagements are also kind of pedagogic tools for me in terms of like events, organizing and the kind of collective forming, collective building. Uh, they're all, uh, yeah, different forms of organizing actually. Um, pedagogy, uh, different forms of pedagogy. And so by being in the nightclub and then finding a space where we are like all having fun. And so like there's some kind of a, you know, solidarity that is coming by dancing to the same thing or liking same things or doing same drugs and all of that. Like, so there is a certain kind of informal solidarity and trust that happens. And that's the moment where you can actually inform people about, we are all complicit in a certain kind of violence that we are doing to other people of our society. And I think that's important that if you know something, you should say something and tell other people as well. I think sometimes as people who have privileges and we are able to access these kind of spaces, it's important to uh, be vocal and say that, that uh, we are complicit in something. We are complicit in a certain kind of violence. So I think that, so the nightclub kind of gave me a new sort of an, uh, this kind of peers, which I was interested in engaging with. Um, more than just necessarily art people at that point in my life. Is that yeah. the second meeting, me meaning of party kind of? Yeah, so exactly. You have ex explained like the party coming from the political party, but that party is also yeah, just a party social gathering. Describing. Yeah. And having fun and doing nothing. Yeah. And, and I think it's also really interesting, again, thinking of like, uh, because I, that institutionally uh, work, what is work? that one thinks that, oh, you have to earn money from it. There has to be some kind of statistics about how the work and occupation has been done. But this idea of just doing nothing and like just hanging out is also a kind of uh, labor, but which is important. I mean, labor can make you feel good or bad, but obviously not in the language of neoliberal kind of, uh, but sometimes caring is also that, you know, like, uh, 
and you're constantly talking about and i mean in nightlife spaces also there was a lot of interesting dialogue because it was raised through the me too movement so i was okay to still engage with it because people were still okay to engage with the idea of space safe space and idea of marginalized bodies within nightlife i don't think i would have really participated if that was a conversation which what they were not willing to have you know uh, so that has kind of happened in nightlife in the last 3 4 years around the world actually with movements like this woman of female pressure and uh, so many others uh, small ones and uh, and obviously there was also capital involved in uh, making this a larger global movement though i'm just saying that you know a lot of times uh, and especially with the rising fascism also in india uh, it's big i actually through another party last year called man gone which was basically on the same day that narendra uh, that our prime minister was getting re elect got re elected so we were just like are they going to get re elected or not so it was like a election uh, thinking of election party and it's really interesting because here and in the us as well uh, people are really apathetic and apolitical when they come from a certain kind of class privilege and when they just are comfortable and uh, because of the kind of rising fascism that we have in india we have come to a point where even the people who are elites uh we'll talk about politics now and it's okay to do that otherwise i was the only kind of like this other person who's like you are too political to be here or like you are always like just talking about politics and now it's totally okay to do that and that party for me was one of the first parties where there was no nothing as but to talk about politics you know because we had uh, the elections the, the government had come back into power so yeah so i think uh informal sites of engagement are really important more than kind of institutional sites of pedagogy uh that's something that i'm interested in yeah so uh, and office is obviously all the things that i've been mentioning in terms of work and uh, occupation and uh different sort of deconstructing different sort of organizational methods so that is office um yeah and actually the logo the tongue the tongue takes from uh the this text of gloria i can never pronounce her name <laughs> gloria anzaldoa uh their work uh, called how to tame a wild tongue um and the text actually just talks yeah so i think and then obviously the conversation around wildness and queerness that's also habstam wildness so those kind of things are what really so i didn't want to call initially i was also calling it the wild tongue but then i was just like don't do it because then people won't come you know because then people are just like oh you're a crazy person so it was supposed to so party office becomes a like a more approachable name for the kind of audience that i'm interested in but the logo still remains the wild tongue uh, because it's uh, that's actually the politics of it that that uh, we are bodies allowed to be and they are we are going to take up space and we are going to uh say whatever the fuck we want and that it can't be tame and that taming is a form of violence which societies do um, on to people um yeah that mhm wow yeah um i think it's a great name <laughs> as like it because it has like it goes into so many like directions and the the concept that you can link link to it like for me it's i think it's great <laughs> um you you spoke uh, a lot about or at the beginning you talked about how you how you um thinking about different forms of hegemony and uh you mentioned um the in in your in your writing about the space you always mentioned that queering hegemony is what is at the core of what you're doing and you already spoke a bit about that but maybe you could um share wh what you mean what you, how you see this queering hegemony in practice in in your like how you address that in your in in organizing the space and in in your work so i can i mean i think i kind of little bit spoke about hegemony did, you did which is power yeah i can also just sort of maybe explain it better when i think of something also which has been a subject that interests me which is archives so what are archives archives are systemic uh, are produced by pe certain people within power because the way they are supposed to be organized and 
uh, what is called an archive is already also this kind of, you know, the this kind of systemic power tells you what is an archive. It makes the archive for you. It said this is uh, an archive is used for you to kind of say that these are your identities. So your nation, your whatever geography, your gender, your body, all of that definitions of all of that come through somebody who has decided that these are the only things, only categories available. Uh, so uh, thinking of archive as this kind of uh, as hegemony itself, as rep it's a representation, it's a representative of hegemony, it's a tool of hegemony, but looking at that as hegemony itself, how do you queer the archive? So how do you queer the archive is by producing, see, it can be done in many ways. It can be done in ways that you produce similar kind of, uh, so I have this work, which is called, you like Mr. Seto, which is like an anti-tour. So a tour is something that, oh, we are going to take you to these five spots and it's going to tell you this story. Uh, so anti-tour would be that I, do, I take, don't take you to those five spots which they find relevant, but I take you to five spots which, let's say, a local finds relevant and it has a local kind of connection, but it has been, been documented within the, uh, the kind of um, like the larger framework of what is the story of, you know, what is, let, let's all go to the Berlin Wall. Let's think of that let's not uh, so these are the it's like the tour so it's like also anti tour so i think one form is to kind of mimic the form that the arc, that the that the oppressor has created and uh, mimic it and basically corrupt it it's like that's how virus works right like you you are able to enter it and corrupt it uh, but in terms of anarchy you just say that i don't even want the state at all <laughs> so I don't adhere to the state at all. So then you just start to do things of your own. And you say that everything that you are telling me doesn't define me. What I am doing is what defines me. So that's an anarchist way of thinking of querying uh, the archive or querying. So, or, and the other way to do it is to through participation, which a lot of people who grow up in democracies tend to, because, you know, people who grew up in democracies, we are taught civil sciences in a certain way that you can only change things by becoming a part of the system. Uh, so anarchy is never taught to you because anarchy doesn't, can't be taught to you. And in fact, even anarchist histories are also not taught to you. Um, and especially also in a country like India, who uh, has basically created a monument out of somebody like Mahatma Gandhi, who is one of the most violent people and, uh, has extremely violent ideas, was a political figure, did everything for his self-interest and a lot of the, the, these different things, which and appropriated actually a lot of other movements which came from, uh, from the Dalit uh, community. So in a country like this, where you say that the values of Gandhi uh, are the values of the nation. So we think of non-violence. So the movements around independence also, which have happened in the 1800s. So India had actually gotten independence earlier than 1947, but it was not in this kind of political form of the way they wanted to get independence. But through a civil war, it had happened. So uh, those histories are not told to us. And therefore, uh, there are these... So yeah, so the participation can happen in any of these either ways. And for me, that is the querying of it. And querying can only not happen. Querying was never happened with majoritarian bodies. Querying always happens by minority bodies. I think this was a, yeah, I, very good example. Uh, we actually also have a project about archives in collective practices, which kind of relates to, <laughs> to what, you're, what you just talked about. Maybe, um, one question about collective practices. Um, you, you talked about the micro, your interest in the politics at the micro level and the macro level. Um, thinking about like working in the, in, in the art, like running an art space or a community space, um, how do you see uh, your work contributing to you have you have something on written about the party office to to arrive at publics which are critical supporting and care for one another which would be kind of the collective practices vision for society um also from from my side like how do you see that your your practice with party office linked to that kind of bigger vision or can art spaces how can art spaces contribute 
to that to a more like collective thinking within society so in india a lot of art institutions have been um either they are just like kind of uh, leftovers of corporate businesses like leftover money uh just like or just like a way to kind of convert money which is taxable into non taxable and our education systems are old and dated our education system actually never even valued things which were from our uh, geography because uh, because a lot of indigenous performers and all were isolated from even recognition uh so i've worked with plenty in fact next week i'm also releasing an interview with a magician because a lot of our street performer practices have not been acknowledged as performer and work they just kind of all get bracketed into like tribes like scheduled castes or scheduled tribes and um so because our education system has also been so colonial uh that uh and then our art is also it's not now it's not even taking from the west it's not even taking from its own geography so it's just really stale so i don't know what you are really learning then the, you have art institutions which get funded by foreign organizations through cultural diplomacy kind of stuff and they um are uh, dictating a lot of contemporary art practices but the thing is that a lot of people who are running these organizations are necessarily again not thinking in terms of what are things which are relevant locally and then everybody here tries to also be like a political um because they have the privilege to be a political because people who don't have those privileges have never been in kind of power so uh yeah and i've worked with all of those organizations and i just people are always scared to go there and i think those are not things where people can exchange necessarily uh and that's why i like the idea of party like in fact i was not getting money to even throw a party uh by art spaces even 3 years ago it was last year that i finally got money to throw a party but it was also again on the name of celebration celebrating queerness and that is like capital anyway for people so it's like okay queer people always party on these so that's what you do so um yeah i don't think people think of partying or this kind of social gathering or like people should be friends as an important thing which is something that also happened actually um, for me in 2012 13 where uh, i went to a school um in california where pa- partying was basically one of the core kind of essence of the school and then because post occupy the rules of the public gathering had changed the rules within the school also changed so our weekly parties were all cancelled and you know uh, so and when that starts to happen you are just meeting everybody then in classroom settings and especially in schools which are like very critical in terms of debate and critique you are just like angry like without really because a lot of times people are not able to articulate through words or something and so sometimes you just need to know the person and what they are trying to say and that's how you are able to help them in their practice and going forward uh so i think parting is really important for that kind of interpersonal relationship and that sort of a community like uh and so what i started to do was that i started to take the party into my studio because now it was not a public space it was a private space and i can do whatever in a private space um so th- so then for a whole like few months i was throwing parties in my studio uh instead of the school having parties outside so then kind of moving forward from that i started a residency program uh, in 2014 in uh, uh, jaipur was an international residency program where i invited a friend who is actually uh, from leipzig and uh, they basically also andre uh, and again like people don't think art traditional art organizations won't think of parting as a form of work and practice but uh, for me it was important to support that work and actually just throw a party um so yeah so we threw a party but obviously it comes from those values of thinking of like you know a party or a gathering but thinking of safety uh and thinking of how 
uh, because again like that's not a culture here like to necessarily how do you articulate okay do be nice like be nice so it was called this party is about being nice that was the manifesto and it was like be nice to your friends who are wearing a different dress or different gender like very simply written not just like no to sexism no to this that's not what it said it used a language where you know it's approachable language so i think that sort of aesthetics are really important also in trying to gather a larger group of people because otherwise you will be alienated for your own politics which is okay i mean you can choose to be alienated but if you are interested in having an engagement then you have to think of mm, I, I, so that's exactly so you still remain wild nobody is asking you to think that but i think it's about um, thinking of how best is your what you are trying to say is going to get past that person and yeah so the party had that kind of a manifesto that this party is about being nice and then moving forward the traditional art institutions didn't let me have that uh, and night club are also just really spaces which are not really critical or know that where does night club culture even come from like it's just like people just trying to make money so they are just really businessmen who are running these clubs so then i think people also don't know necessarily what a club can be you know like a queer uh, like it's been a really transformative and like space for queer bodies clubs in uh, places where uh, there isn't so much i mean there is transphobia everywhere but like where there is still a more, more trans visibility than there is so i think so for me obviously that's something that i've been organizing in india as well like through queer night life here um and organizing in queer night life here uh and also like critiquing a lot of things within night life because even within night life people just talk about like they're just like cis bodies six gay men doing drag and i'm just like that's not what drag like drag is an appropriation of trans bodies and um so for me i'm not saying i'm doing drag but i for me i'm trying to bring more uh queer queer trans bodies into and give uh and kind of make space for those bodies so uh that is something that just all things that i've done over these years so party office is just really a coming together of all of that really like i have done a lot of work around archive and thinking like that so in fact party office project which releases next week one of them is called what remains is memory uh and that is basically building of new queer archives so somebody actually invited me to do like five drag performances so i'm like okay whatever that is but uh, basically i invited my friends hmm, who are all from the trans community to kind of make work because i mean people can imagine whatever drag is what is that even but i think it's really important to understand that what when you have a certain kind of resource what are the people that you make space for and i think so that is just something so obviously like i am also sometimes able to try and remove party office as a space from my arts practice because personally i might not want to be friends with some people but it doesn't mean that you know that what they are trying to say shouldn't get uh, a independent space like this so i think it's really that you know because it's a home it's my house and i have weird sleep hours or i am still open for people being there and actually it's just it's really i mean it's obviously sad also a lot of times where like people kind of um because i you know when people come in or whatever i give them agency in terms of like doing what they want to do or like inviting who they want to invite and stuff like that and that obviously sometimes like kind of is shit for me uh but i think you just learn from these things and then you don't yes i think those are things that i'm just learning right now like in terms of the what is the space versus what is the curatorial um yeah but i want them to be together so i think the space is maybe more open to voices which i primarily might not be necessarily interested in but for me it's about trying to kind of engage with them uh but curatorially i will always still kind of find resources for people who i believe in mhm mm okay um i think 
we are we are already talking for a while i i have maybe one last question but do you have something that we haven't touched on that you wanted to definitely share no, no <laughs> um my my last question would be um how you or how you're thinking about space and party office has changed during uh, COVID, and how you see how you see your current practice, or your like for the how how you kind of transform what you have described like about the parties and the coming together. Um, how how you think how you are thinking this in the current moment? Uh, yeah, so I think. Um what I was sharing, like, like a lot of this coming together and this kind of gathering part of the of party office or anything really is about uh, bringing in uh, people who come from maybe multiple spaces and then the collective dialogue needs to be intersectional. So for me, that is important that these collective dialogues are intersectional. So in terms of curating something where it's about a dialogue or anything. So I try to bring in voices which might have multiple kind of things. And then a lot of times when that's not there, I just sort of add to it. So that's just my curatorial work of like adding, but I'm also very flexible in that way that I don't have to necessarily prepare in advance to do that. So I think in terms of dialogue that is happening, but I mean, for me, physical intimacies are really important and physical presence are really important. And for me to think of, uh, the idea of public private possibilities. So obviously party office thinks of like, you know, everything traditional party or like art and all of that. But for me, uh, thinking around the idea of kink is also really important because what has happened, there is a complete, um, there's a lot of phobia around that. There is a lot of uh, shame around that. Um, and I think all of those things are really important to understand basic things of consent, partnerships, uh and that sort of queer futures because right now the queer future conversation just kind of is politically uh, uh, sorry in terms of law and all they are just like going and asking for upper caste uh, lawyers are going and asking for uh, rights for gay marriage and while there is there are completely shit trans rights which are there in india and we are fighting for that while the kind of whatever the cis people want some marriage rights uh, and, but there is no understanding even among mental health space or uh, queer mental health space as well about the, about kink. So that kind of things are also really important for me for party office. And that's why I think of, and then uh, idea of the kitchen is very important for me. So the kitchen actually, the way it's designed is that the kitchen is just open into the space. So your event happens and the kitchen is there. So it's not isolated because that kind of gendering of architecture and that kind of that's also a problem in terms of our psyche and how labor gets divided and work gets divided and this work is important and this work is not important and i think so for me all of those intersections are really important in private public possibility and that is what party office for for and it still remain a home like i live there um uh, so obviously those things are not necessarily happening <laughs> um and because Delhi is in a really bad thing, then you don't know where, where COVID is traveling from. So I think that's why this shift has happened in terms of more curatorial work than just uh, kind of gathering or event work. Uh, and yeah, so I'm just kind of doing different uh, curatorial collaborations for now. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Well, thank you very much. Uh, you I, so think, much. <laughs> I think we, um, we walked or you walked us through so many like corners of your of your thinking and approaches that's um was super interesting <laughs> thank you thank you very much and we look forward to our so the first activity is going to be the soil to soil meal on uh, august 19th and 21st <laughs> yeah. thank you okay thank you